So when your podcast gets sidelined for a month, like a whole month due to illness, you know, it's not just, you know, it's not just in like the NHL playoffs that you miss quite a few topics that otherwise you might have liked to talk about. You know, it's also in the world of the UFC. Man, I missed out on quite a few topics that I otherwise would have really liked to talk about. Um, and I'm probably not going to go back and cover them. I just don't have the time. Uh, but there is one coming up that I am really excited to see. This is going to be going to be such an interesting fight. And that is, of course, going to be the fight for the lightweight championship of the world between the champion Islam Makachev and Dustin Poirier. And it's uh, there's, there's so many different different things kind of going on with that division right now. I mean, one of the biggest ones being that, uh, I mean, it, right now the division does seem to lack like a real clear number one contender. I mean, Dustin Poirier's last win was a pretty big one. It was over Jack Magdalena. Then we got to think back and remember that his previous fight before that was his BMF championship loss to Justin Gaethje. And so you would have expected that actually Justin Gaethje should be the contender in this fight. But then he turned around and he wound up losing the BMF championship to, to, uh, to Max Holloway. I almost said Dylan Holloway. <laughs> but he lost the BMF championship to Max Holloway. And so really, there is no clear-cut number one contender. So it might as well be Dustin Poirier. But actually, this serves the UFC pretty well, potentially, in one big way. And so that was... I kind of have to reel back a little bit. And I have to go back to when the uh, when Habib Nurmagomedov vacated the UFC lightweight championship of the world. And so the UFC, they had a fight to fill the vacant championship. And that fight was between Charles Oliveira and Michael Chandler. And so Oliveira, I don't think a lot of people really expected him to win that fight. But he did, and he went on for a little while, and he was a pretty good champion. But of course, the problem is that when you're the champion that comes in after the previous champion vacated the title, it's almost like you're it's almost like you have a whole new championship. So you are now champion number one in the lineage of that particular champion, and you don't even really have the argument to be able to say that you could have. Beat, that you would have or that you did beat the previous guy. You're not a lineal champion. You're not the guy that beat the guy that beat the guy that beat the guy that beat the guy. You're the guy carrying the belt. And now you have to establish the value of that championship again. It's not an easy task to do. And Charles Oliveira, he did have the opportunity to do that, and the best way for him to do that was to go out and try to beat all of the guys that had been beat. And he did get a couple of them. Like he beat Justin Gaethje. He beat Dustin Poirier. And then he missed weight and wound up, you know, he wound up eventually having the championship stripped from him. And then he lost the fight with Islam Makachev. And now Islam Makachev is the lightweight champion of the world. And so now Islam, he kind of has the same problem. It's being, being Habib's guy, being Habib's protege, is not really enough to say that you are carrying around the same championship with the same value as the one as what it had when it was it was, it was when uh, as when Habib was carrying it around. You know, he is again kind of starting from scratch. And really, I wouldn't say that he's done nothing with the lightweight championship of the world, you know, so far. But he hasn't done as much as what he really needs to be able to do. He's had two championship defenses, both of them against a featherweight. I mean, yes, Alexander Volkanovsky at the time was the featherweight champion of the world. But he did seem to be on something of a downward slump. As on his third consecutive defeat, he lost the featherweight championship of the world 
and now he is no longer. Now he's just another featherweight. So what has Islam Makachev done with the lightweight championship of the world since he became it? Well, he defended it against uh, against a lighter, smaller guy. I mean, yeah, Alexander Volkanovsky is a great fighter, but he's a smaller fighter. It's not that big a deal for a bigger guy to beat a little uh, smaller guy. It's not that big a deal. So how does Islam Makachev establish that his lightweight championship of the world is the same championship as, or of least of equal value to, the one that Habib Nurmagomedov carried around? Well, he does have a very interesting opportunity to do something that would make that case for him. And that is that what he can do is he can go out and he can defeat the best fighter that Habib Nurmagomedov ever defeated. And that fighter is, arguably, Dustin Poirier. I mean, yeah, there's going to be an argument for, for there's going to be an argument for Justin Gaethje. It's Justin Gaethje did beat Poirier for the BMF championship. But for my money, I honestly do think that Poirier, if they, those guys fought three times, I do think that Poirier is likely to win twice. Could be wrong about that. I wouldn't mind being wrong about that because I love Justin Gaethje. Like Justin Gaethje is amazing. But if I had to make that case right now, I think that I would tilt in favor of Dustin Poirier. And so, with all of that in mind, this is a huge opportunity for Islam Makachev. And that actually kind of makes it a big opportunity for the UFC. Because they do still have, in my opinion, the best division, the best weight division that has ever existed at one given time in that lightweight division. And it only seems to get better. You know, if they decided that they wanted to, uh, to to repopulate some of the other divisions with some additional stars, I mean, if they ever decided that they needed to boost lightweight or, uh, pardon me, featherweight or welterweight, there's all kinds of guys that they could kind of bump out of lightweight in order to do that. But they haven't really done that. As a matter of fact, it only seems like lightweight is really getting that much more crowded. Because it sounds like maybe Max Holloway is going to try to get that back to, uh, with his career at lightweight rather than going back to featherweight now that he's the, uh, the BMF champion. And so it seems to me, at least, like in this upcoming fight, the UFC could instantly reestablish the value of a championship that honestly, I think really could use it. I mean, I talked previously about how they needed to do something to distinguish the BMF championship as like its own thing, because otherwise it kind of puts them at risk of the BMF champion basically becoming like in the eyes of the fans, you know, the real lightweight champion. Now, that was actually something that I kind of think that the, uh, the that that's that's a prospect. I think the UFC should be considering that maybe that's something that's happening in the eyes of the fans. But if Islam goes out and beats Dustin, well, then now suddenly that championship that he's carrying carries a hell of a lot more value than it did before. I mean, alternatively, Dustin could win that fight, and then it's kind of back to square one for the UFC with their lightweight championship of the world. But I do also think that Dustin Poirier is probably a lot more, a lot more predisposed to be an actual fighting champion than what Islam has been. And I think of all the things you could say about Islam Makachev, you could not say that he's really being a fighting champ. As a matter of fact, I kind of feel like this is maybe the first, you know, really, you know, all things considered, all factors in, you know, this is maybe the first, like, you know, reasonably fair fight that he's taken as the champion. Which, in my opinion, goes to show you exactly how badly the UFC actually needs this. And I'm not even saying that they need this to go a particular way. I don't think that the, yeah, I, I definitely do not think that the UFC needs this to go in Islam Makachev's direction, uh, to go in his favor. But they definitely do need something to happen there that will definitely solidify the 
value of that championship as being at least something akin to what it used to be.